good evening and welcome to the Tuesday night music show without the people who talk music, or at least some of the people who talk music. Hey, I talk music. I know. And I, I, I get confused and then I cry and then, you know, but I got a corner to cry in tonight. So I'm good. Oh, you hang just fine. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes you do. We'll throw so, you a so, Huey bone here and there. How's there you go. So, so typically on Tuesday nights, and these are recorded, Jay Brandon is uh, filling this spot and you have Howie and, and Brian, but I saw Jay and I think he's kind of busy in Las Vegas tonight. Yeah, he's, he's gigging. He's gigging. So we'll let yeah. him gig. Yeah, we don't yeah. need him. I saw, I saw a picture of, uh, of Jay out there and it looked like he was about 10 to 12 people deep. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wants to see that new gear. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, they wanted to come and see Jay. Yeah. Oh he, yeah. That's right. Gear, yeah. The, gear. Yeah. 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 The pioneer. That's <laughs> nah, just, yeah. yeah. They, Jay, Jay definitely holds court out there. He does. A yeah. good job. <laughs> he does. And he's clever too, because I watched Rachel's video and she goes, I'm going to do something. I hope I don't get in trouble. I'm sneaking over to the Pioneer booth. I get a picture of the Rev 7 and they had taken it. Jay took it back to the room. The table was empty. (laughs) Oh, funny. Yeah. Yeah. So story. I was looking at some musical conspiracy theories today. Oh, Mm, interesting. Well, you know, I I was just bored. I was slipping through and he just popped up and there, there was. Have you heard the Paul McCartney one? Do you know? No. Well, okay. How he knows it? Uh, the 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 conspiracy theory with Paul McCartney is that he died in 1965 in a car crash. Okay, right. And they brought they brought a guy in named Billy Shields from Wales or something, and did some plastic surgery on him, and and he's the the replacement Paul McCartney because Scotland Yard apparently told them, hey, we can't tell the public that Paul McCartney has died because they'll flip out and they'll riot. So we have to get a replacement. And there's all these goofy signs on the album covers. And if you play songs backwards, it says, I buried Paul and all this crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it, it was something that uh, actually a Detroit radio disc jockey jumped on. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He was talking about it, and, and there was a caller who called in and said, hey, play the song backwards. You'll hear him say, Paul is dead. And it, and it, it, it you got to be looking. It's kind of like looking right. at a flat and saying, hey, that looks just like my mom, you know? Right. <laughs> like, you got to be no. looking for it. it. If you're looking for it, that cloud will look like your mom, you know? If you're looking for it, you're going to find it. Yes. Yeah, but I, I was just thinking, that. I was just thinking, you know, Let's just pretend for a minute that it's true. Okay. All right. Let's pretend that they're right. And, and you know, some, some conspiracy theories are real conspiracies and they, be, you know, doesn't happen often, but sometimes it does. Mm-hmm. So let's take the position just for a moment that Paul McCartney died in 1966. I have a confession to make. I like the new guy better. That's what I was going to say too. I like some of the wing stuff much better as I'm listening right. to yes. listening to to uh-huh. uh, get back and and I've been working through that a little bit, and it's like, uh, yeah, okay, uh, you know the guys are talented, but you know I'm I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bored watching this. If it wouldn't be for me icing a knee for you know six hours a day, I don't know if I'd be watching this. Oh, I enjoyed it. I I, I took it for what it was. I understood what was happening. I, I really appreciated the dynamic. Mm-hmm. It answered a lot of questions. I really mm-hmm. enjoyed that. But yeah, I was just thinking, my God. I mean, if you let's just pretend for a minute he died. How are you going to find a guy that prolific to replace him? Oh well, I know where they found him. They found him on Junior's farm. That, oh yeah! Uh, you oh. see what I did there? I it's see a what you did there. Music show, you know. I see what you did there? <laughs> <laughs> it was it was just a funny thought I had. I'm like, my God, if he did die, you know, all the cool stuff that he did in the later days of the Beatles, which is the best stuff, all the mm. solo stuff through, like I, I guess the mid '80s, I really liked. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, I'm. I gotta admit, the new I guy have- is awesome. Yeah, I, I prefer yeah, him. I'm, yeah. If I got to call him Billy from now on, that's fine. But yeah. So Robin. music, music aside, just think of the, if it was indeed true, how a secret at that level could have been kept, right. held so tight. 
I know. <laughs> in this day and age, we can't even keep a secret for a half an hour, you know, type of thing. And if that right. could have indeed have been the case, that's pretty impressive. Very yeah, impressive. none of the Beatles ever said anything. None of his ex-girlfriends ever said anything. Yeah, exactly. No one ever said a word. They all like the new and, guy. And, you know, of course, uh, George, Paul, and Ringo felt so guilty about it. They felt that they needed to put little clues out there for the fans and backwards messages you know and it's (laughs) my god but yeah just yeah i'm thinking to myself well yeah the new guy's awesome i prefer him and if if the new guy is really not really paul mccartney then maybe the beatles kind of sucked i mean not not sucked but not as good as i thought they were yeah anyway fun (laughs) fun funny thought robin brought something up earlier she was in the room yeah and she was talking about some of these battery power supply solutions for Mm. speakers, like for ceremony and things. And she was mentioning someone I wasn't familiar with who, who did a test on some halo thing, some halo power pack. And they were able to get an hour and a half out of a speaker. And she felt like, well, that's just not enough. You have to invest in a a much nicer power pack. And (laughs) here's my thought. And, and I want your feedback on this, both of you. Both of you will have some, some good feedback on this. And, and it'll probably be different. Maybe not, though. I'm thinking in 2022, why even mess with this when you can pick up an American Audio Apex 12 Go BT for $249 on Amazon? Why even worry about this stuff? You can get a battery-powered speaker with Bluetooth and, and all the fix-ins. Well, that sounds I can, good. I can tell you why. Because it was... I believe it was before the pandemic, you had a guy message you and you pulled me in on it. And he was, he was under the gun that the schedule had changed for the wedding and they needed a remote speaker. He couldn't, he's willing to buy, but he couldn't get it in time. Would the Omar's power pack power a 12 inch top for a ceremony? Right. Remember? And I did a live test right here mm-hmm. and i i got i got three hours sure just from the omars i understand what you're saying but what and, and and i get it but i'm seeing them available on amazon right now okay fine there's one left hurry one yeah. left well but but still i mean if, <laughs> if you were planning on getting a battery powered system for summer would you get something like an Omar's or would you go ahead and just get a purposely built speaker with an eight hour battery capacity for 250 bucks? That sounds good. John, um, what would a you tough do? One. <laughs> that's a I, tough one. Yeah. Because, because on one hand, I kind of like the, su- the sound of what I have, i.e. the Evolve 30 or the Evolve 50. And I know I can get a battery pack that will run that. Yeah. So there's that. Then there's might be something happening in April that would be very interesting in this conversation, but we'll talk about that later. Okay. And uh, and and the, the last side of it is that you know I do have some of those those inverters. You know, it kind of like the the Ryobi ver- version of it, and and boxes like that. Right. Um, I can use cabinets that I I have. So in my case, I don't think I would go out and buy a. Um, the only, the only speakers that have been somewhat tempting to buy that are battery powered are the JBL. And it's not so much because of them being battery powered. Yes, that's nice. But the idea is that you can broadcast to one and then you can, you can link the other, the next four. Right. And I could literally surround a tent by, you know, speaker stand pole. And, uh, and that capability is, it would be huge uh, that you can do that with the American audio. Can you, can you multiple do multiple though? You can, well, I don't know how multiple you can go, but you can do Bluetooth. You, get, stereo. you probably do get, you probably get does I, two. I'd have to hear them before I'd make a judgment. You because know, like John yeah. said, I like the sound of what I have. Sure. And when I, when these were on sale before I let the cat out of the bag, I got this for 200 bucks and it has two AC outlets. And I bought one for each 12 inch top and one for the sub. And the tops, I got 14 hours and the subs, I got eight hours out of the sub. And I'm like, it's a no brainer. But the big bonus is the charger for this is just a small wall wart and it's a pass through. So let's say you're at a venue and it's storming 
Mm, I would plug right. into this. Mm. If the power went out, I still have sound. I have battery powered lights. It's nice. up to the venue manager now. Hey, do we, you guys want to keep continue with the, uh, you know, with the, uh, you know, reception? Sure. They're going to say yes. And then you get to be the hero. Right. Uh, good point. Yeah. 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 The pass through the pass through would be definitely a nice, a nice feature. Yeah. See, you thought we weren't going to have anything to talk about. Look at the great stuff I'm bringing. I up. know you, you just yeah. you become a master of this. So, you know, because I listen to the shows, uh, you, you, you get to, get to about half the halfway point, and then uh, that's usually when Jay starts to go. Jay, yeah, hand. Jay's had too many white claws, is and that, it's over. Yeah. I can't do anything else. <laughs> so there's is that of... when, is that when you turn it off? Because usually at the end, Brian says. We're gonna get fired if John watches this whole video. Yeah, like, yeah, so that's that's why we're still <laughs> good. Good job next week. We'll, we'll see you next week. <laughs> we, I never get that far. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what really pulls out that white claw. It goes crazy. Excuse yeah. me. Oh, jeez. But yeah, yeah. the the uh, the whole battery thing is kind of an interesting world because uh, this particular summer I've got a couple of ceremonies that are in difficult locations. Uh, similar mm-hmm. in, in some ways to what Howie experienced when he started, uh, when he built his first uh, complete battery powered system, mm-hmm. we're going to be um, in a, in a family's hunting land where they're going to have everything up in front, as far as the reception side of it, where the catering can get to and, and kind of an outdoor, um, I think it's a, it might be a log shed of some sort, but anyway, okay. that's going to be up where the vehicles are, but they want to get married back by the deer stand. Oh, of course. That's what you do. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. there's nothing that says love like a deer stand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right over there is where we got our first deer together. Yeah. You know, ew. it's so, a move. So that's going to be one of those situations where we're going to have wow. to go wireless. And in that case, it's going to be wireless and you know very portable because I think that will be on the back yeah. of a you know, an, AT, an ATV type of thing to get there. Well, I was just thinking about that. Oh, just getting there logistically is going to be fun. You're going to be four wheeling like, yeah. like an ATV four wheeler. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what they're going to be. Uh, they're going to be doing because I don't even think they can use golf carts to shuttle people back and forth. So they're going to be using, I think, side by sides, the six person or six passenger side by sides to get oh, people geez. back in there. And, and it's not going to be. It'll be like 25, 30 people, so it's not a huge thing. But Cooter will be back with the Yamaha. He had to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He had to go bring a keg of beer up there. He'll be back He'll shortly. Back in a little bit. It's great. Step yourself. I that's squirrel. Wait. <laughs> that squirrel bothers you just uh, knock him down and clean him up for supper it'll be great gonna be hunting some vittles on the way back so it might take him a minute yeah uh, but um that's in, is is that a a, a a job you're gonna do john yeah yeah oh yeah, that one yeah, video one, video or it didn't happen <laughs> uh, yeah exactly uh no that that's that's one of them michael has made it kind of uh kind of knowing that he would prefer if there's gonna be you know difficult or unusual He's not too excited about those. Those don't, those don't turn, don't excite him. And those are the stuff. war stories you get to brag about. You got bragging. Yeah, but no, it, it's the, it, those are the ones that build character. I mean, these ones where you walk right. in and it's a younger crowd and they want you to play, you know, nineties <laughs> through the 2010s. And, and it's like, ah, that's nothing. Let's go and let's go and play that one. You know, that, uh, where, sure. where we start and, you know, that side of the, that, part of the family hates this part of the family. And then that person over there is really drunk and so decided that they're going to become the moral police. And you know, there's the, shotgun somewhere. Yeah, exactly. We're just waiting for that. Oh my or, gosh. Yeah. Or brass somebody's knuckles. armed. Yeah. Somebody's, somebody's going to get hurt by the end of this, this event. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's um, probably Grammy, granny. Yeah. Granny's the one <laughs> in her cane. She pulls on, she's got, yeah, she's so, got it. This sounds like what happened to me um, five years ago when I did that wedding in the Poconos and they insisted on getting married a half a mile from the reception area out in the woods. And you had literally they had made the railings out of, you know, you know, saplings and so forth and, you know, climbing up railroad ties that were filled in between. I mean, it was a nightmare to get the equipment there. And yep. then, but I felt bad for the people that dressed for the wedding, these women in heels, and oh, they're walking man. through the woods. I was like, oh my gosh. Oh, and, but they did get to sit on log stumps. So they had that going for them. You know, this sounds familiar. This sounds so familiar. <laughs> uh, and, and you know what? I, I, I don't think that I've made it a secret that I come from some serious redneck stock. I mean, my father got out of town when I was young. <laughs> 
and that's why I talk like I talk. Anyway, my my brother's daughter got married, and she got married on her now husband's parents' land. And they wanted to get married at the creek, but it was in the other side of the swamp. And you had to drive an ATV through the swamp to get oh, to the spot. Right. To... Nice. And uh, you know what the best part about this whole thing was? It was during COVID, so my mother and I didn't have to go. Bonus. <laughs> we dodged you always, it all. You he always find been... the silver lining, Brian. Yeah. My mother was like, oh, thank God for COVID. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 deal with it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, funny. Oh, my goodness. We were talking about um, freestyle music last night. Hmm. When you guys took off, we went on this whole freestyle thing. And Buddy was in the room. He was sh- playing some Chicago freestyle. I was playing some real mainstream stuff. And I was pretty happy with myself because I played some stuff that Brian Cade never heard. And I thought he'd heard all that stuff. Wow. But I turned him on to some will to power he'd only knew of the baby i love your way free bird thing yeah yeah uh but there's a whole other album that's amazing and it's all freestyle i don't know how familiar you are with it john it's not something that really has crossed my radar because oh uh, boy it's it, it yeah. was it was on the radio here it was played in the clubs it was really good really 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 good and in fact the the guy bob rosenberg the he was a mobile dj in miami and he did mix shows on the radio station and he did these songs and he would give them to other radio stations under the name Will to Power. So he didn't know it was from a competitor. And the stuff was like number one hit on the other radio stations. Mm-hmm. So he just, yeah, he just became that guy. Uh, but anyway, the, the reason I bring it up is because Buddy was playing some stuff and a lot of the stuff that he was playing uh, wasn't inspiring to me. And it got me thinking about what I like about song. You know, what I enjoy. Sure. There are songs, there's one really big popular freestyle song that is played at like every quinceanera. It's by an artist called Lil Susie. It's called Take Me In Your Arms. I don't like the song. It doesn't have many key changes in it. There's no bridges. There's nothing dramatic that happens in the song. I like drama in my music. Hmm. I like dramatic key changes. I like bridges. In fact, if there's multiple bridges, I'm happy. Uh, I, I didn't know how you felt about that. If you knew that there was an element that you really enjoyed in song, if there was anything in particular that just, just caught your attention, is there anything like that? Yeah, it really. I mean, that's not anything that I could point to. I mean, I can I can pick them out. That's not the case, although I, I, I still contend that I'm half tone deaf. Um, I, I was actually, when you, I've heard you guys talking about uh, different genres of music and such, and I, I come to, mm-hmm. I come back to these situations, freestyle and, and other things you've talked about, <laughs> is that I've never, I never really play them because it hasn't been something that's been requested and it hasn't been something that made my, my set mm-hmm. that I play for my dance floor. Sure. And because of that, there's, there's just areas that, that, you know, i I'm never going to be a brain surgeon, so I really don't yeah. spend much time studying, you know, the anatomy of the brain. Yeah. Totally um, understand. And and that's where I've really gotten to. And I and I was thinking the other day as I'm listening to you guys talk about, uh, you know, you and Jay, the three of you are just going off on on uh, talking about these different things. And it's like, should I feel bad that I'm an idiot when it comes to some types of music, uh, or is that, you know, is it something that does that matter when it comes to the DJ side of it? And I I really the, haven't the DJ side of it. No. Yeah. I'm going to agree no. because I was playing some of those songs and I didn't know that the, that they were called freestyle. All I knew is that's what they requested. Right. It's yeah. I mean, it's just, a, it's, it's today. Uh, most Latinos they they like reggaeton. They like hip hop mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they might like smart B, but back in the old days, it was all freestyle. That's just what Latinos listen to. And it was English. Most of it was in English. Very little of it was in Spanish. But that was the music of the Latin people. And and there was Miami scenes and and, uh, New Jersey scenes. But when it comes to freestyle, it's not like I'm a mega fan of the genre. There are just songs that I like. And out of it... 
is it because of the 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 build the build of the song with yeah. the different elements and such, or is it because some of them are telling a story and some of them maybe not so much? I don't listen to lyrics. Okay. Yeah, I don't. He, listen, he that, that's country. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you got to remember. You keep this in mind, okay? And and I know that I'm I'm the baby of the bunch, but not by much here. <laughs> but when I was born. The, the, I think the number one song was Joy to the World by Three Dog Night, which starts off with Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Yes. I, it was I, all like, like he this. He was a good friend of mine. This experimental progressive pop stuff. It didn't mean anything. No. no Alligator no, it, lizards it, in the air, Ventura Highway. What is that? No one knows. No one cares. It doesn't matter. But if I watch like a YouTube reactor talk about this stuff, what is an alligator lizard? What's he talking about there? You missed all the melody and harmony in the song, which is the best part. So, I, I think you're right, because I did miss that, because I, I still to this day wonder, why didn't that horse have a name? Right. And, and, and who cares? <laughs> right. Yeah. It, there's all kinds of stuff that didn't make any sense when, when we were young. It wasn't like, there was a lot of innuendo in the song, but there was also a lot of, just weird like prog stuff going on even in pop music yeah. when it comes to lyrics mm -hmm. but you know john to to give you an idea of what i'm talking about and something you could probably relate to i think perhaps i'm thinking about the huey lewis song heart and soul that mm -hmm. song is full of cool bridges and key changes mm -hmm. you think about the you know the verse it kind of sounds like the intro and then it goes into that bridge she gets what she wants because she's hard and sold and it goes down. That's cool. That is stuff that catches my attention. And that's what mm -hmm. I like about song. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what kind of genre it is. Mm -hmm. I like key changes and bridges and things like that. I, I think they're wonderful. And I was listening to a song the other day that was blowing my mind. With your love, Jefferson Starship. Mm -hmm. The whole song is all bridges. Everything's a bridge in that song. There's not like, okay, here's the chorus. Here's the bridge. Here's the verse. Here's the B section. Here's the outro. No, it's all bridges. It's, it's like a weird song that way. And it's cool. Because mm -hmm. they come in so nice. Oh, I love that stuff. I, I, I shot high on this topic. I know that. But I thought I'd just mm -hmm. bring it up and talk about it. It's working so far. As the host of the Tuesday Night Music Show, who's just kind of babbling to himself about this stuff, oh. while you guys sit there and say, "When is he going to wrap this and start talking about batteries again?" Yeah, let's let's go to let's go to gear. You know, yeah. <laughs> lighting. No, you know, <laughs> we could talk. No, we could talk music. But I, I still, if you had your your choice, what would you name the horse with a no, a no name? Horse. <laughs> <laughs> we really well, need to get this figured out. A man called Horse. Um, maybe we should call the Horse Man. It doesn't rhyme. It doesn't rhyme. I've been uh, through the desert on a horse named Horse. About lyrics. Well, I, I don't. But I would oh, name the horse, horse Horse. Horse. Okay. Save time. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't have to buy extra letters. <laughs> no. Like a dog named Dog kind of thing. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to buy a valve right now. I don't know where we're going. <laughs> we're just being Tuesday Night Music Show again. We are. So, so as long as we're, we're talking music and such. Yes. After the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. my children, i.e. my sixth graders specifically, and I mean, uh -oh. I, just a few minutes ago, he's out here. They're into, they're trying to learn how to play the next episode on oh. a piano. Oh, and, and my kids, I, I was thinking about it. It's like my Michael, he, he was into uh, Snoop Dogg and, and Dre uh, uh -huh. when he was in that junior high and, and throughout. And of course, mm -hmm. when he would drive the kids to school, he was playing that for them. So then when they saw it on a Super Bowl, it made a, probably a bigger connection with them that Snoop yes. Dogg and, and Dr. Dre were on stage than myself. I thought it was pretty cool. And 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 an M was on the stage. It's like, yeah, I don't, yeah, but. My kids were like, yeah, we like these two. You're sixth mm -hmm. graders. What's up? <laughs> the, the next episode is a sample. And I think it's so. from a musician who's an actor who was on NCIS for a long time. And it's like this progressive jazz album. Mm. 
and that's they the sample, sample. It. they sample it from that i'd play it for you but we get flagged yeah but i'll share it with you after the broadcast and you can turn the kids on to this and it's it's mostly um well there's some guitar in there and a lot of horns mm-hmm. but i will turn you on to it after the show but it's a sample and i the name of it slips my mind. The guy's name slips my mind, but he did like this progressive jazz stuff. Just sure. He did it in the late sixties, maybe. And they sent Dre sampled it for that. Did a nice job with it. I, I think it's a cool sample. Hmm. Either here or there. Coming, coming from a jazz. That's interesting. Yeah. It's a, hmm. it's a jazz, like a progressive jazz sample track. And what would I, what would I uh, kind of, It's like when you watch 60s movies and you hear the music in the background, it's that kind of music. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like not like hit songs, but the, the, the movie soundtrack music. Sure. While somebody's, mm-hmm. you know, creeping around the house or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's that kind of song. Yeah. And there it is. Where have I heard that, that, that riff before? Oh, yeah, that's that's. <laughs> Sample. Have a conversation with Howie. I'll figure out what it's called so we won't leave our viewers hanging for the broadcast here. Uh, yeah, yeah, if you can find that and such. I will, I will. But yeah, that, I'm, I'm with, as I was you know, kind of watching and listening and thinking about this and the response you've seen from so many people on the uh, Super Bowl halftime thing, it really was making me wonder. Initially, I thought, okay, we might be able to introduce a song or two back into our playlist for the summer mm-hmm. based on... You know, mm-hmm. the, the people of that era and that age that are still going to be hitting the dance floor. And then I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, if I have that in, a, in our household, there's probably many other households who have a similar situation. And we may have a, um, oh, yeah. a, a time where, mm-hmm. where we'll have junior hires that are going to be like knowing that stuff. And, and then, it, then it brought me back to, okay, when Snoop came out the first time and people were really, uh, some of the schools were like, yeah, can you not play his type of music? Because, you know, he's a, he's a pothead and we don't want to have that mm-hmm. here. Right. And I'm yeah. wondering to myself, is that going to even be a part of the discussion anymore? Or has that ship sailed? I, I, where, I think, I don't think so. Not any, yeah, not that, these days. Yeah. yeah. They'll be like, yeah, play that one. Yeah. We can, we can definitely. I, and, and I have a feeling you might be onto something there, John, like, well, I used to have like, you know, a secret crate that I would pull songs from that people hadn't heard in a long time. Yeah. And then Guardians of the Galaxy came out and oh, all boy. the kids were asking for these older songs. And I think this may be the new Guardian of the Galaxy, this Super Bowl set. I mean, there was all good songs, I thought. I mean. And then and if you check, watch the uh, the charts, because I get the charts ready to go up on uh, today, uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, the email go the uh, weekly printable charts is that, the, you know, they, it wasn't just the couple of songs they played. They went a little bit deeper into the catalog, the uh, catalog of some oh, of these did artists. They? Oh. So yeah, there were five, six songs that, uh, wow. that, that uh, went, went up there. Good. So yeah, it's, it will be an interesting thing to see um, what we will see if we're going to, if that will be, you know, with coming into proms, if they're, if that will be part of that request system mm-hmm. or we get into weddings this summer and people are going to want to hear, uh, you know, more than just California love type of thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> usually when it's like, yeah, can you play some of that? Okay, great. Which one would you like? Which one do you know? Well, we know California love. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, that one works. I guess we'll play that then. Yeah. California love is usually a pretty safe bet. Mm-hmm. I, I'd never have a problem with it as well as, and I followed up with the East Coast Notorious B.I.G. Hypnotized. There's a very clean version of that I can play. Yeah, yeah. That, that way you're covering well. both coasts, so that, that's nice. Yeah, it's kind of like, here it is. And if yeah. they really, really want more, I'll do more money, more problems. That, that and one that's when the survive. fight started. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's when Grandma pulls out her <laughs> she's, pulls out her shiv, and next thing you know. I'm Grandma, trying to no! Oh, <laughs> Don't do it, Grandma! Remember no. the last time you did it at the senior bingo? It was terrible. <laughs> okay. Um, so have either one of you watched um, NCIS? Oh, I do all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's on our TV quite an awful lot, but typically yeah. I'm, I'm doing shows, but it is there. And I, I've gotten the guy of- right there, David uh, McCallum. Okay. Oh, who plays he used to be, he used to be, uh, he used to be in secret agent um, yeah, back did. in the sixties. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's the guy who plays the song 
that's the sample of the next episode, which I'll mm-hmm. play, which I have queued up for you, and I'll play it for you. Play it after the, after the show. Yeah, that's Very the cool. guy. Huh. Yeah. Very cool. The song is called "The Edge." The Edge. By the way, so you guys yeah, can go David, check it out. David McCallum, "The Edge" is the sample for next episode. And you know he's had quite a career. He's had two hit TV shows now, music, and the guy's in his eighties. Well, it did the music a long time ago. I think, yeah, British actor. Hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm I'm full of useless information, and I'm always happy to share it with my friends. On he TV was in TV. Man from Uncle, also. He in music. Yes, he was. Oh, that's what it was, Man from Uncle. Yeah, Man from Laurie. Uncle. That's it. That's Laurie, it. Laurie chiming in there. Thank you, Laurie. Yep. Thank yeah. you, Laurie. Laurie came to save the day. As she always, did. Laurie's. She did. That's as right. always. Yeah. Oh, she she saved the day too. On the way back, um, we stopped. John dropped me off at Lori's because uh, to, so I pick up my truck, but she made us lasagna. Save the day. So we had nice. a very lovely lasagna dinner. And John is actually he'll be home. Um, he'll be home in about 45 minutes. Oh, nice. goodness. That was a, that was yeah. a longer, longer drive than I thought it was between the two of you. Yeah. It, yeah. It um, was... Well, the yeah. rain and then, you know. Uh, yeah, it was just, um, but it was, it was worth it. It was just, you know, it really was. It was a, it was a cool road trip. Mm-hmm. It really was. So, so as we're getting, as we're moving into what will be our, our wedding season here in a few months, mm-hmm. what kind of, what kind of things are on your itinerary to work on between now and wedding season? I think I'm is, good. Is there anything that's that's <laughs> like I well, on I was, that list? Yeah. Let's well, go. um, what I have to do is just test everything um that goes out on, you know, for the larger events. Sure. Because I have one booked in April. And believe it or not, while we were down visiting Jimmy, I got an email back or a, a message back from someone that had asked two weeks ago and I gave them the, I don't really want to do this wedding price. Mm -hmm. And they said, we would like to book you for, (laughs) for May 13th. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm in North Carolina right now. And I'll, I'll give you a call on Wednesday. And I said, I'm like, wow. Okay, great. So, typically, typically uh, on my end, I'm the guy who books everything last minute. So mm-hmm. I'm not the guy who books a year and a half in advance. I'm the guy they call six months out. Yeah. And I've done yeah. this week. I booked a June quinceanera. I know why I take another quinceanera. I, I like the abuse, I guess. And sure. I took a July wedding uh, this morning. So I actually, the, in the last two days, I've done that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, stuff's yeah. coming in, but I, it is, what, it is picking up. I mean, geez, I I've got the new Provent table in black. It looks really nice. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. the lights work fine. The mixing board works fine. Uh, the speakers are great. It's running the 30 M's for anything under 150 and it's working great for me. I, what am I going to do? I, I think I'm good. Mm-hmm. I really do. I, I don't know what, I don't really need to buy anything. If I work on something, it would be something like a, a personal skill or something intellectual that I need to work on or something. But I can't think of any thing I have to purchase before I get going. I don't again. have to purchase anything, but I do something that I've always done um, since that system hasn't been used since Beret. Mm. I will set the whole thing yeah. up, everything, lights, sound system. I'll set the whole thing up. Make sure, hey, did I like maybe take a cord from this, you know, you know, particular case and sure. use it somewhere? You know, I don't want to be at the gig and go, I can't plug in my Whoops. speaker. Yep. <laughs> hey, I almost had a gig in January, so I was all ready to go. <laughs> everything was updated. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I went through everything. I spent all week going through Pretty cable ready. bags and updating tablets and computers and music and that. get everything just right you know every little thing that was wrong with stuff when the season ended i fixed that week and you even i'm had ready a to contract. go you even had a contract yeah 
you were you know, and then and then mm. yeah. what are you gonna do but i mean i got paid you know so it is what it is but yeah but it, yeah i mean i already did all that i guess what i'm getting at mm-hmm. so i have nothing i have to do beyond charge up a if there's anything to charge and off you go it's funny you mentioned yeah. that i had things on the charger last night because we had a bit of an ice storm today yep so i just in case nothing happened but we had lights if there was a problem mm-hmm. yeah. and if we wanted to dance we could too i guess <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but i'm sure we wouldn't be doing that i'm sure we would just be you know trying to see you know what a good, but, what a great plan <laughs> don't worry honey if the power goes out we're gonna have dance lights. This is gonna it's be a awesome. Really, 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 really good plan. And I've got this tablet, and I've got this Bluetooth sp- battery powered speaker. We are set. I don't know what's wrong with me, John. I, I, and I'll make this confession here. I haven't said this to anybody, but uh, as soon as I heard the ice was coming, I immediately charged up my all my ape lights, and yeah. then I said, "You know what? I need to charge all my power tool batteries." I don't know why. But I did. So <laughs> I was running back and forth, swapping batteries and getting all my tools. Like, what am I going to do? You know, put an addition on the house when the power goes out. But I, I'm ready for all this stuff. Well, what? oh, the lights went out. Uh, quick, we need to hang this piece of sheetrock. Right. Where's my, Where's my jigsaw? Yeah. I need it. We're going to cut that this. window out finally. Well, I, I was thinking in my head, you know, I don't know. I, battery powered stuff is good to have. If the power is not out, you know, you'd wish you'd had it if you didn't have it charged. Yeah. So I charged the jump box, you know, the diehard jump box. That's, mm-hmm. I don't know how, how, how good that is anymore. But you can plug stuff into it. You can plug AC stuff into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And all the Craftsman batteries, all the Milwaukee batteries, <laughs> all the Ryobi batteries, all the Toro batteries are charged. You were ready. Okay, so really, honestly, the reason I charge things, I, I started to, was because I have an electric jacket. Okay. And it was going to get cold, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to not have a battery for my electric jacket. Blanca, she can freeze, I don't care, but I wasn't going to get cold. <laughs> so I was trying to make sure that my jacket was ready. So I charged the little the battery, and then I just kept going. And I don't know. <laughs> And then there's that battery, and then there's that battery, and then well, for might these, as well while we're those. at it, yeah, while we're at it, might as well, yes, yeah, yeah. So, I sir, mean, so cir- cir- circling back uh, for sorry. summer, what, but uh, there's one thing that I, I wanted to work on this year is is to get the whole antenna combining into fins for some yeah. of these ceremonies. This is the summer I'm mm. actually going to spend the money and, and get the, the proper tools to do it instead of basically uh, using bubble gum and aluminum foil to yeah. lift it up in the air. Yeah. As high as exactly. You can. exactly. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Pastor, we're having problems. Can you hold the microphone like this when you're talking? The group's right. too tall. Yeah. Right. No, I, are you really, are you, do you really think that's necessary for a ceremony? I mean, I, I've, I haven't had any problem with the half wave antennas. Not, I, not yeah, once. It's, I've had a couple of problems and I'm not exactly sure if it was a frequency issue. Um, I did find out one of the times I had one of my half waves, the wires in it uh, the, or the uh, connection into the thing wasn't, was, there was a break in it. So it wasn't doing anything. I didn't realize mm. that. And I, I started l- l- paying attention to it. And it's like, wait a second. It's not showing anything being received on this side, but everything's being received here. Everything's being received here, but nothing over here. And then, you know, then I pulled it apart and looked and it's like, oh, it's not making contact uh, with the, the mm-hmm. unit. So, but yeah, there's, there's just times where, where most ceremonies, I won't need it, but there's going to be a couple of times where we're in a longer distance, or I want to be able to take a microphone and walk halfway across a yard that has a huge tent. Right. And I mm-hmm. would like to have that capability to be able to go into, you know, all the way over where they've got food in that pole shed, because it seems my summer is going to be doing barn weddings and I'm going to be outdoors uh, once again. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. I'm, I'm, I can certainly handle that, but I think yeah. it's time to, the, to uh, up that part. Uh, I haven't sure. really done much with microphones in a number of years. So that's going to be my big one. Uh, other than that, yeah, the, the 30 M is going to be the interesting gear wise um, for speakers of how much I'm going to use that this summer. A lot. 
because after you had said this fall that that was kind of your go-to, I've had yes. a couple of smaller events that had under a hundred people and I used the 30 M's and you know, they didn't even sweat. The 30 M's I've used them for 150 plus, whether you advise that I do it or not. And what's so nice about it is I'm not losing anyone. Yeah. People are having conversations. They're not screaming at each other. So that's not fatiguing them. They're not leaving the room to have conversations yet. My dance floor is hot and I don't know if it's if it's just a perception that I have, but I think I got better bass response than that thing than my fifties. Hmm. Oh, it's I, tighter. Know, I can I can just see the comments now. Like, <laughs> no, you cannot go over seventy five people with those things. No, no, you, you no, yeah, yeah. Amps. No, what you need is an ETX system. That's what you really need. Yeah, you need an ETX yeah. for over seventy five. Yeah, like, well, um, well, I like to bring you know, I like the the portability of my thirty M's. But then you know, when I have that seventy six person, then I like to bring in <laughs> four of the ETX subs to add to it. <laughs> yes, you need yeah, right. subs. Perfect sense. Perfect yeah. sense it at may, all. Yeah. Well, that one <laughs> extra person, it, it does. You know, I need those subs yeah. for that one extra yeah. person because that's just, you know, it's over the 75 and you've got to be prepared. Well, you know, my friend, well, I, I have a quick question oh, yeah. for you, both of you guys. Okay. Um, your events that you have coming up, you know, in the fall and summer, are you finding they're smaller this year? They were, they were my my, my yeah, wedding is, small. it's only, it's only 75 people invited. You know what that means? Probably less will show up. No, well, maybe. Yeah. I, th- I think though that's going to be, a, a uh, less lesser thing than it was those last two years. Um, it, it used to be that you'd think that seven, you said know, roughly 75 of the invites or 75% would show. And then this past year for us, it was somewhere between 40 and 50% of the invites were showing or excuse me, RSVPs this summer. It was horrible mm-hmm. here for us. I think we're going to get back hopefully to the, you know, the RSVP and you'll have, you know, 10% off of your RSVP, 75% of, of those you invite will RSVP type of thing. I'm hoping we're going to get back to that kind of numbers because it's really tough to have a happy bride when she had 175 people say that we're going to be there. And then she counts, you know, 73 people total there and she's paying for food for close to 200 people because Mm -hmm. she didn't, she didn't want to run out of food. So I'm hoping we're going to be beyond that. I tell you the most fun wedding that I had last year, the most fun wedding I had. And I think back on it, it was the one I was dreading the most and it was, uh, black wedding on on the the north side of town, which is not my side of town. It's the opposite side of town. I'm on the south side. Uh, it was for my friend, my well, Andy's really good friend's uh, girlfriend's daughter, and it was mixed black Latino and and uh, his grandparents were white. Twenty five people. They cooked for a hundred in uh, a room behind uh the church like the the what, what do you call it the uh, you probably Parsonage? fellowship hall Parsonage? no 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 the the where, where they they talk the guy preaches that's the whatever room sanctuary no no um you know what i'm talking about whatever yeah. that, not the theater or whatever you call it and they had like an activity it's kind of like a yeah like like you said it's like that the activity center or whatever oh okay yeah the 20, that would be the fellowship hall Fellowship Hall. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That, I had that in a Mormon. I like uh, that work. Mm-hmm. So anyway, tons of food, but I, I, I had told the bride about the family hour concept where you mix it up for everybody since there was a little bit of everybody there very mm-hmm. reluctantly. I mean, very reluctantly. She's like, oh, I guess oh, I started yeah. doing this. <laughs> I started doing this. All 25 people danced all night. Wow. I started with 25. I ended with 25. Wow. It was the most fun event. That's it, great. It, you just, it was so intimate, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and you knew everyone's name, you know, mm-hmm. and, and you just knew, okay, grandma's going to dig this. So they're going to join in. They wouldn't normally dance to it, but since grandma's doing it, they're all going to join in. And not only do they join in, but they do a soul train line about it. And then grandma wouldn't normally dance to this, but since the kids are, she's going to jump in on it too. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. So Mm -hmm. I I kind of, I'm not worried about how many people, Uh, the the concern that I have usually has more to do with the size of the venue. If they've got a venue for 200 and they got 50 people there, 
it seems yeah. sparse. Right. But if you've got the right people in the room, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You've, got, you've got 25 right people there, you're good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If 25 duds show up, you got a problem. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think for the talking numbers with some of the weddings, when I've had that conversation with them, I've got some that are, are wanting the 300 person wedding that they think they're going to get 300 guests at wow. the, a couple of them are, are talking that way. Uh, some of these barn, mm. wow. sure. but the, uh, uh, many of them, uh, you know, that are doing these smaller, uh, back, uh, backyard type things. So mm-hmm. I, I'm probably going to see more under 150 than I'll see above 150 for sure. Blue. Backyards are weird though, John. I, I don't know if it's like that where you live, but you know, I, I know of course, you know, Blanca and her family. If if we say that we're gonna have a few people over, mm-hmm. right? And we invite, let's say, I don't know, let's say that we invite five couples over for like a holiday or something, they bring people and and you don't have enough food every single time yeah so there's always more that come it's the same thing with the quinceaneras they can plan for 150 but you better count on 250 because they're just going to bring people i know that sounds rude but that's how the culture works Mm -hmm. and they're welcome that's just how it is so sometimes those 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 informal events are more informal events where you don't necessarily have to have the head count for dinner you could get more than you thought sure Mm. Yeah, and it's been a long time since I've had one that has exceeded numbers like that, and it has happened in the past. Generally, sure. if, mm-hmm. if if it's a uh, there's a the city celebration is going on, and because it's a everyone comes home for the city celebration, they're getting married that weekend, and then they're doing the, you know the dance out at the farm, and the city you know two miles away is when the town thing, and at some point in time, it seems like everybody from the town the band in town came out there and we were supposed to only have, you know, 150 people. And all of a sudden we've got 500 people under a tent. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's happened um, a couple of times over the years, but mm. not, of, not recently. So it'll be, it'll be an interesting year to see how, uh, how numbers and how people are interacting and reacting when it comes to, uh, mm-hmm. when it comes to the events here. I remember Stevie wanted a 50 person. She wanted the tiny little 50 person wedding. That's what she wanted. And her mom told her, Hey, you know what? just invite a hundred because 50 are going to say no. And that way her mom got her people on the list too. Sure. Well, hundred people showed up. So <laughs> she was, she was happy and not happy all at the same time. It was kind of interesting to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Buddy. You never know with this stuff. Uh, let's see. see uh, Johnny asked in the uh, chat room there. Let's hit that one and then we probably should wrap things up here. Yeah, let's just um, get out. All righty. Uh, taking bookings into 2024. Actually, that's that's an interesting because I've had some people wow. requesting information for 2023. Mm-hmm. I had two of them actually last week um, that did this. And I, I looked at the dates and it's like, really? Are these legit i assumed it was just somebody you know, that was messing with the system or some spam thing but they were actually <laughs> we're planning yeah, 2023 yeah. events um so how far would it would you take a booking in this day and age i would be very suspicious of somebody wanting something in 2024 even 2023 like you said like are, are they just messing with me or what let's let's yeah. just let's put let's just say it's a legitimate a legitimate pr- prospect, yeah, but not, not someone, you know, like a family member or a, you know, close friend, but it's someone that, you know, you've, you've talked to enough to say that, that it's a legitimate event. I, well, I would, sure. I would take the booking. I'll take, I'll take whatever. I don't care. Yeah. See, and I think, I think at this point in time and where I'm at in the, in the DJ thing, I would really, I would probably question booking out to 2024. Um, and, and the reason, unless it was a local thing or it was fairly, but I mean, if I had to, if it was in a Minneapolis or a, a drive and it wasn't an optimal event for me, I, I would almost, I would not probably pass on it at this time being that far out because I, I don't know. I mean, that I enjoy I, what I do, but I don't know yeah. if I, if, if the opportunity came to, you know, go and, and, uh, 
you know, spend the day plugging uh, batteries in with Brian Red all day and get out of the <laughs> DJ world, I probably, I'd probably really think about that. You know, there's because it's. I, 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 I think that I'm going to be doing this until I'm dead. So yeah. I, I mean, I don't think I have a choice either. So I, one I think thing this, I wouldn't do, um, I wouldn't take a deposit for 2024. I, but yeah, I, would, I was just going to say that. Yeah, maybe I, you I have would an put agreement. Put it on the books and and then say, hey, look, let's revisit let's it. Visit it, and I have your email, and we'll talk. Your reserve, no one can have it, but that but might be how I would handle it. If somebody wants that date, then I would call them. And go, hey, somebody wanted your date. Do you, are you still good for that? Still want to do that? Yeah, yeah. It's exactly yeah. how I would handle it. Exactly, yeah. and and that's yeah. just because it's once bitten, twice shy with yes. all this <laughs> cancellation crap. And and it, it, Johnny mentions, of course, yeah. that uh, the price is not knowing what his price will be in 2024. That That's that true. was one of the things that bit me back, you know, a number of years ago when we were doing multiple shows, is we were booking shows two to three years in advance, and that was during the time we went from doing a wedding at 495 to 695 to 895 to 1295. So there were so we were doing the year that we should have been everyone that was at 895 that summer. We had weddings on the books where that were 495. Yeah, and then sure. and then I had DJs on staff that were like, okay, um, you're this weekend you're an eight eight ninety five DJ. Next weekend you're a four ninety five DJ. And mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. and they were like, well, what's what's? It's just they were booked at difference. Well, is my pay going to be any different? <sighs> what well, if you see. anticipated? <laughs> what if you anticipated a ten percent price increase per year? So if it was two years out, it'd be twenty percent. You'd have to do 20%. something like that. Yeah, yeah. you'd have to yeah. have to do something like that. And if they didn't want to do it, they didn't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, it's too, it's a good question. Too, too easy because then, then you get to that point is okay. So let's say we book mm-hmm. a 2024 event and right now we're booking just for easy numbers. We're booking it at a thousand dollars. Well, if I add things to my services and now I've been able to have this really cool new light show that some guy that programs them on, on an iPad has helped me set up. I've got this cool thing. And did you see my new speakers? I've got these surround sound evolves out here and it does this incredible thing. And then I have somebody who comes and hands chocolates out during the dance. It's incredible. This is my new package. And now my package is $2,500 and people are paying it every weekend and they're loving it. And you know, in 2024, everyone's going to want the holographic Michael Jackson to lead them in the thriller dance. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a thing. You're going to go to a show. You have to buy it. And, and it's some gonna... weird company like Max Photo Booth who makes it. And, and, <laughs> and everyone's going to have to have it. And he's the only one who's got it. And everybody wants it. And they're going to want the, yeah, the holographic. You got to have the holographic Michael Jackson doing the thriller dance. So there you go. You got it, Johnny. You add that to your 2024 package is that. And then you can raise your rates. Mm-hmm. And gas is thirty bucks a gallon. Yeah. Well, there'll be oh too. no, let's not go there. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave that one alone. That one's going to get ugly <laughs> quick, but well, that's that's a. Well, I'm just saying, you don't know what's going to happen. That's, that's true. That's, that's true. That's why it's hard to to you know put numbers on paper right, right. now, realistically, right. because yes, yeah, we just, we question, just don't though. don't know. Yeah, so. it was. Good stuff. Well, gentlemen, it's it's uh, almost to the top of the hour here. We should wrap things up. Uh, yes. Let's see. Next week, Jay should be back, and uh, we can get all oh the fun reports from mm. Las Vegas. I'm kind of excited about that one. I might have to actually come in and sit in on that one. And you should come in more often. And, we like uh, it when yeah. you come in. Well, yeah, and that's we it's 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 a little tougher to do it from the office because then it get the I have the heat this the heat thermostat set on a schedule, okay. and it shuts off about yeah. nine o'clock. So by mm-hmm. this time out there, I'm cold. <laughs> Really right. cool. So now a smart guy would be able to figure out how to change the set the time settings and, and fix it. I've tried, but then I, I, it just doesn't reset itself. It well, just, now that you're stuck in the house, you can. But now I'm in the house. Yeah. So I went, I, this is what Michael's bedroom here at the, uh, you know, this when he's off to college. So half of a guitar on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. He's got, he's, he had his uh, guitar over there and oh, there, it is. there, there was a, uh, there were skateboards and different things. My sixth grader came in here and he's like, okay, I'm going to get everything set up so that if you do the green screen thing, that it'll look really good. And he's right. It did. He had, he had lights set up, but one of the lights we were using in the front is a battery operated one and I forgot to charge it. So it's okay. You were, you were still gorgeous. <laughs> so, so you should have been at Brian's house. He would have Exactly. Charged. If I would have, I had him it. charged up. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, I'm you know, in all fairness, those drills have little LED lights on them when you pull the trigger. So that was yes. a flashlight. So, yeah, that would be that would be so much help. Yeah, it just didn't work. Oh well. Thank you. Once again, thank you guys. We'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.